Well, everyone, this is the Euro USD day trading review for the week of October 11th to 15th. It was a decent week. My I only traded about an hour to an hour and a half most days. I think one day I got up to two hours. But I got my trading in the morning, then I have a personal trainer right after. So it's been a little bit rushed through the summer so that my trading sessions have gotten a little shorter. Uh, that was to make time for golf in the afternoons, but golf season's winding up. So hopefully I can push those training sessions back and get into a little bit more in the hour and a half to two hour, hour and a half to two hour sessions. So this is this is based on, you know, not having super long sessions, maybe about an hour and a half. So there was some decent potential out there. We're starting to see volatility move up just a little bit, which is nice to see. This was a little bit slower time for sure. The monthly profit potential is here. So we can see August last month when this was kind of going quite a bit lower than what we've seen other months. And then September, we start to see the uptick kind of based on this here. And this is more the August area. So yeah, that's good to see. Hopefully that trend continues and we can get up into this area because that's more movements can equal more trade. This is going to equal more uh, profit potential valid good opportunities not uh, we don't want to be just trading for the sake of trading but if we have the movement and we're seeing the valid patterns that is typically going to translate into more profit so about a 61 percent win rate eight wins out of 13 trades so 13 trades still pretty low kind of in that maybe two trades a day kind of thing trade an hour or so about a trade an hour 2.5 reward to risk we'll see a few of these trades i got in and out of uh, early because we either had a reversal or a couple when I look through them today from earlier in the week weren't really great patterns so we'll talk a little bit about those and those were double pumps that I didn't really like so we'll talk about that uh, but still ended up around that 2.4 2.5 to 1 reward to risk which is what we want rounded tops rounded bottoms made up all the profit this week 14 R and double pumps actually lost me a few R and we'll talk a little bit about double pumps and why I didn't like a few that I did take and we'll talk a little bit more about those and how to maybe tighten up that strategy a little bit so let's jump in this was October 11th the Monday it was Thanksgiving in Canada so I didn't trade this day so I just went through the chart and pointed out the trades I would have taken and you never know exactly how, but these these are the patterns I saw, and you know the, the logic behind uh, why I would have been in these or not in these. And this is just a classic rounded bottom. We have this little shift to the upside above this prior swing low pullback. This is the first bar to the upside that takes out the prior candle high. So a nice rounded bottom, pretty much perfect pattern. And this would have went run almost right to the target. But I had to hold through this pullback. It got very close, so if you wanted to get out, you know, here, you could have. Uh, no problem there. If it gets really close to that target, I don't mind getting out of the trade. Uh, but even if you didn't, this could you could have viewed this as a rounded top here, here. This makes a shift to the downside. So at this point, if this starts to transition back down, we would have got out of this trade whenever it started to head back to the downside it didn't though it just exploded higher so as this tracked up you would not be uh, getting out of this if you could have moved a trailing stop loss below each candle low that way if one does get taken out and you do get that transition to the downside then you'd be out of the trade this one this one definitely would have probably trapped me a little rounded top here not much progress on this bar then we get this nice big red bar shift to the downside below this swing low perfect pullback starts to drop and just doesn't go anywhere and flies to the upside i put that you could have flipped i don't think it would have been too possible uh you would have had as super fast reflexes especially when your mind's kind of in the short mind frame you know you just got triggered into a, a rounded top uh, I don't think I'd be thinking too much about flipping this long at that point. So pretty much just a loss there. This one, 
nice little rounded bottom here we can see the slowing not much progress pushes higher higher swing low there strong shift to the upside above this last swing high a little pullback and this one could have got out again this one just barely missed it so i said it spent a lot of time up here in profit area so i said on this one that would probably have taken a you know partial profit in here somewhere for one pip if you had taken this uh, double pump here this would have been a minus one I didn't put in the little thing here I put it in the stats I don't think it would have been a trade that I would have taken 95% sure I would not have taken this you never know exactly when you look at a chart in hindsight you never know what would have exactly been going through your mind at the time but one thing I want to point out about double pumps is I don't like it when a double pump is basically almost the entire size of the last up wave. So we have this up wave here. We also have this little kind of stall out here. But really, by the time this starts clearing above these little candles here and starts its upward progress, that'd be right about this line here. And this comes all the way back to it all the way up all the way back so it's it's retraced pretty much this entire up wave i don't really like that from a double pump and i made that mistake again or i made a mistake like this uh trading a, a big double pump later on and later on in the week so we'll, we'll look at that example but yeah this is for this little of an up wave this is just too big like these are basically waves in and of themselves and if I wasn't leaving right away, uh, since they're retracing so much of this last up wave, you know, at this point here, it almost you know, becomes more of, do I want to take the, the short? Um, so we'll talk a little bit more about that double pump, but it just cut too much into this up move uh, for this to be a really solid uh, double pump. So like I said, I likely wouldn't have taken it. But that being said, I did make a mistake later in the week of, of basically taking this type of trade. So this is October 12th. And so here I did take a double pump. In hindsight, I didn't really like this one either. Uh, you know, we have the big drop, which is good for a double pump. Little pullback and it just didn't quite get like it, it got close but i really like to see that symmetry and it just didn't really get back to that last low why i did take this one is i like to sometimes block it out and go through kind of bar by bar so here not really interested it hasn't gotten up to that high and you know we're just kind of chopping sideways what did get me interested is right there we start to move above this prior high and you can see we pop above it stay up there for a second and then this little trigger I don't even know if you can see it it's pretty small but this bar this last green bar just dipped a little bit below this prior green bar and that's what triggered me into the trade because I thought okay we've moved above this level it couldn't hold it and now we're dropping again we just had a big drop so that's what got me into that trade and then boom it was just gone i was aware of what was going on uh with this though in terms of the price you know you can view this as the big drop the pullback tries to go lower can't if you view this as a round of bottom now this is your little pullback and the price is starting to go higher so i basically got stopped out and flipped long this annoyed me a little bit i lost my what did i call it lost my nerve a little bit and so i had originally set my target up here because i was thinking after this big drop there's a good chance it's gonna you know have a, have a decent size retracement especially after this long sideways period you'd think that after this kind of period uh for a downtrend big drop chop 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 it's either going to fall off a cliff or each bar the price moves above now 
you know, traps a whole bunch of people who are short. So as this starts moving up, you know, all these people who are short here start getting out. So I, I figured it was going to have a pretty good rally. And, oh, and as a side note, that's why when you have a really sharp drop, often after news, uh, we have a couple news trades later in the day, or not news trades, but trades that occurred after news. And you have these really sharp moves that happen during news. And a lot of people get into those trades. They're high volume moves. But they also tend to reverse very quickly because as the price starts to reverse direction, you now have all those people who now get scared as the price starts going the other direction and they sell off. So when you have these really sharp moves, especially in the currency market, they can tend to reverse fairly quick in all markets. But Forex is highly leveraged. You have a lot of you know short term speculators and you know, so as this starts to move up after a big move, all of a sudden all these people who are short now uh, try to protect their profits or uh, try to keep their losses small. So we get this spike up. Anyway, so the price starts moving up. I, I happen to get in seeing this potential of a rounded bottom, not really a classic rounded bottom, but, you know, we have the drop, a little pullback, stalls out quickly here. It stalls out a lot, getting squeezed. So taking this little false breakout, okay, take the false breakout. If it fails and we move above it, then we have a possible rounded bottom. Held through basically all of this, thinking we're going to get that big move higher, only to duck out of this trade when it popped above it and I closed out basically right there. And it shot up. So I was a little annoyed with myself that after holding through all that, I lost my nerve. But it, it happens. And so ended up with 2.66R instead of 4.25. So that's, you know, that's a pretty big chunk of change to give up. But either way, went for, I didn't like this double pump either. There is, you know, a lot going on here. And I think I would have been much better off just waiting for once this kind of higher low happened and we made just a slightly higher high. Uh, I should have just been waiting to see if we got the rounded top. And instead, I took this double pump first. And it was based on this low. We have this kind of all going on. And then the price finally comes down to test that low again. And we had that little false breakout again. So the price dropped below this level and then started transitioning to the upside, went long there, quickly failed, and again was able to get short. So damage minimized. But I, I don't like that I, I took this trade. This is just not... When I look at that pattern now, I'm like, what was I thinking? That doesn't even look like a double pump, really. This should have come down here. A lot's going on in between there. We're getting, you know, one, two, three attempts uh, or two more attempts to move above this high, which really fail. So not a great uh, double pump in my opinion. So I should have just left this one alone and waited for this opportunity, which was uh, much better. Oh, and here... So getting into the rounded top, then if you notice, you get this shift to the upside here. So we were making lower lows and all of a sudden we make a lower or a higher swing high. Not good. So stop loss, as soon as this starts to drop, stop loss is going out. So if this transitions to the upside, I'm out because now that's a rounded bottom. I don't want to be holding a short through a rounded bottom. But we get this really strong sell-off, but it stalls out right near that prior low. So I got out here. Worst case scenario, you would have been out here for, you know, 0.2R or something. So, yeah, just basically failed right away. We'd already had that shift to the upside. So this, I was saying, like, this has to drop quick because now we've had that shift to the upside unless this makes a substantial lower swing low to kind of shift things back to the downside uh we've we've taken away our short bias with this uh you know spike up here so once this got down here and just barely undercut that low and then started moving up got out so 
It's one of those ones that uh, we had the big pattern going to the downside, but no uh, trigger. So here's our rounded top, shift to the downside, waiting for a trigger, none, 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 none. This one got all the way back up here. And once that happens, we now have a shift to the upside because this was able to get all the way back up to this prior swing high. So we have this, this. Now this move, did I get rid of that thing already? Now if this drop is a higher swing low and we start to get that shift to the upside, we know that we will have a rounded bottom in place. So pretty nice there. There was also, a, this, this trade was done pretty quickly. So we did have a little double pump here and it's a little lopsided. I like to wait to see till it drops right to the bottom. But compared to some of the double pumps I did take, this one, looking at it in hindsight, looks much better. Why? Because of what I talked about before. Really strong move up, and this is a tiny, it's, you know, a, a fraction of what the up move is. Whereas that other one that I took, you know, the price had dropped all the way back down to this area. So, you know, up waves, in this case, the up waves like this, and the DP patterns like this, whereas that other trade that I took earlier in the week, you know, the trending waves like this and the double pumps like this. There's almost no difference between them. Uh, whereas this is trending wave and the double pumps almost just like a little wiggle or a consolidation with, you know, a little up and down in it. And that's more the pattern I like to trade. So this one would have actually been a better trade for me to take than some of the other ones. And yeah, so I just kind of noticed that I messed up the double pumps a little bit this week, but it, it was good to see, uh, you know, kind of measure these out and see, yeah, when the price comes all the way back to kind of where the trending wave started, those typically aren't so good when we get these, and that's covered in the course. We have the big trending wave and the double pumps, just a small part of it, you know, push up, not much of a pullback at all, moves right back to the highs, not much of a pullback. Those are the kind of ones we like. Here's another example. Big up move. This pullback, move to the high, pullback, not a good double pump taking this long here because this double pump area is pretty much the entire size of this last up wave. Those generally do not work out as well as these types of patterns. So a little bit of a difference, but big difference in results. A little bit, little bit of a difference in pattern, big difference in results. Uh, broken break. We won't talk too much about this. This was uh, a little bit different strategy and you could just say this one was more based on just seeing kind of hundreds of these um, false breakouts and kind of news reversals and stuff. So this one maybe a little bit even aggressive uh, on my part taking this short that early but either way um, you can read some of my notes on it. This one, so there was a rounded bottom here. Nice shift to the upside. This up move clears above this swing high, nice pullback. This would have been the long point right here. I did not take this one because we had just failed in a major way to move up. After you've had a major failure to move up, so we had this really strong uptrend, pullback does not make it to the a new high and then we just made a new swing low here so in my mind kind of like best case scenario is maybe the price makes it back up to this area maybe overshoots it a little bit but basically this area got probed hard and rejected so there's to me little upside movement available for the price at this time what seemed more realistic to me is that this area, and this was also the day high, so we popped above the day high, popped above it again, and now we're making multiple swing low, multiple swing highs below that old uh, day high. If you watched the, if you haven't, if you're watching this video, go back to YouTube and there's a video on 
breakouts, false breakouts. Watch that video because it, it basically talks about this exact concept that's going on right here. Tried to break the day high a couple times, couldn't do it, and now we're moving under the old area, more likely to shift down. So waiting for that shift, we have it here, a drop below the prior swing low, little pullback drop. Now, you know, this was looking pretty good. Then we have this really sharp reversal to the upside. So this hit our target, but we can see not much downside momentum. Basically what I was talking about up here is starting to happen down here. This drop barely clears below that one. This one, you know, it looks like a nice streak of red bars, but when you compare it to this prior swing low, we only dropped about two pips below this prior swing low. So not a lot of downside momentum. And then we get this really strong shift to the upside. So even though I didn't like the long before when this was going on, now we have evidence to suggest that the market can't go lower either. So when you get that really strong shift to the upside, this would have been, I would have loved to have gotten in here. Um, and in hindsight, maybe I should have, but really big stop loss. You would have had, you know, like kind of about three and a half pips plus a little bit of room for, you know, the spread, stuff like that. So you're looking at probably a four, 4.5 pip stop loss. I generally prefer not to take those trades. And, but yeah, it would've worked out, would've still worked, probably worked out. Big, big run to the upside here. And yeah, I would've really liked to have gotten long there. And it's weird to say, I wish I would've gotten long there when I was just talking about how the market failed to move to the upside. But do you see how that transition happened from the market's trying to push higher, it can't. It starts to move lower, so we want to be going short based on that. But then the short side can't gain any momentum either. That is new relevant information that we need. So when the price starts moving back up, we see those transitions to the upside. Now, it's basically like the longs are in trouble here. So, we want to, when we start seeing those shifts to the downside, take advantage of that. But now we start to see, uh, everyone's going short here and the price can't make any progress. Once this happens, all those shorts are in trouble. Once that transition occurs to the upside, all those shorts are stuck and you know, that's going to help fuel the price higher. Yeah, this day, I feel like I missed a couple opportunities because everything worked out except for the trade I took. So there, there weren't perfect patterns, but even if you would have traded them, they would have worked out. So this one, nice rounded bottom. I didn't like the size of the stop loss, but boom, nice, nice strong up move after it. So, you know, you probably could have made something on that one. Here's a rounded top. I didn't like how sharp this came in and you know, by the time it gets down here, we're a little outside the pattern, but still, even if you would have taken this nice move to the downside, you probably would have got your full target. So, you know, two kind of imperfect patterns, which I decided not to trade, and both of those would have worked out. Here's a really big double pump. Uh, I was just talking about how I, I don't really like trading these really big patterns. Uh, this one, like, here's the basically where the down move starts and it does come pretty much right into where the move started. So too big for me to trade. I'm, I'm not going to trade it or I prefer not to trade it. And you know, it would have worked out too. A little false breakout. Boom. If you went short there, you would have made money. So it's like seven R 7.5 R on kind of imperfect patterns. And then when I finally see a pattern I like, it doesn't go anywhere. The price just stalls out here. So that's, you know, it's going to sometimes happen. I, I found it kind of funny and noted it there. And yeah, so this rounded bottom, no problem with that. A uh, little shift to the upside here, pulls back, starts moving higher in on that. You know, it's in a profitable zone here, just waiting for it to see if it pops higher. And it doesn't. And I probably just should have left it alone at that point and got out once the price failed to move up here. So it makes a little bit of a lower swing low here, which 
negates our rounded bottom trade because now we've had a little shift to the downside. So once that occurred and the price started to move up here, I just should have kept it at that and as the price transitioned back down, because now we have a potential rounded top, just got out. I didn't. Instead, I took a rounded or a, a double pump because we had this drop, move right back to the high drop, a little false breakout at the bottom. And I was thinking, you know, it's not too much of a risk to me if I take this and if it fails quickly, I'll just get out, which is what I did. Um, but really, this went against what I've been talking about in this video. Very small up move. This double pump retraces all of it. So not a, it was not a strong trending move. To add, to add another position onto this, probably not ideal. Did it cost me anything? No, I, I saw that, hey, this isn't a great trade. It's not a great double pump, so if it fails, get out real quick. But it also kind of you know, reinforced that I'm, I'm buying, I'm buying again, and it may have sort of blinded me to taking the short opportunity which occurred just after. Uh, I did have to go so if I had five extra minutes or ten extra minutes would I have taken this short? Possibly but you know it seems like I was a little stuck in a long side view here which was unjustified. This was not a good uh, double pump so I, I would call this a bit of a mistake on my part. Um, yeah, not a great double pump. The rounded bottom was fine. Uh, yeah, just get out of that one flat and you have a clearer mind. No double pump here that's worth taking. And then, you know, you have a little bit of extra time before that next one to potentially capture 2.5R there. Finally, last day of the week, Friday. Day of Patience, this was the one that I really liked. Here, uh, there's no rounded bottom here. It's basically just snaps higher. Same thing with here. Uh, we start to slow down. We would have need to get a little pullback in here and then a drop. Instead, it falls away. We're way outside the pattern at this point. No chance to go short. This just falls away. You can see there's no like rounding here. Uh, it's drop, drop right back to the lows. We have a little shift up here, but it's not our, you know, kind of something we could draw the arch on. Um, too big for a double pump. Up move, and we've retraced all of it. We've traced more, we've made a new swing low, so definitely not a double pump. Um, if you were looking at this as a rounded top, top makes a little bit of a higher high. Here it makes a new swing low. There was no trigger. Uh, it would have had to stall here and then move to the downside. It doesn't, it just moves right to a new high. So there was basically no trading opportunity that I saw in here really. Same thing within here, no double pump. Your up move is basically completely erased by this first drop right back into what I call the crotch there. So you know, our up move was erased by the double pump. So that's not a sign of strength. That's actually a sign of uh, potential weakness when that happens. So no double pump in here. Uh, even here, didn't like this double pump. It's just too big of a pattern. But we do have kind of an overarching rounded top scenario playing out here. We had this high. Now we've tried to probe this area like three times. So we still have our up, down, up, it just kind of went, you know, a few times, and then we're just waiting for that shift to the downside. Nice shift to the downside here. Uh, even and we had a shift to the downside here, but then again, no trigger. We get our first bar. We would have need to make a new low below that. We did or, uh, drop below that. We didn't. We moved up instead. So this is our first real shift to the downside, where we get a pullback and then a trigger to go short. And so that was a 2.5 uh, yeah, R trade. Uh, if you just missed the target, you know, if you got in a little bit later or something, uh, could have just closed it out. Uh, otherwise you would have gone in on the next uh, drop. And then a beautiful classic rounded bottom here if you had been trading a little bit longer, drop, 
barely makes any progress. Move up, doesn't make quite a swing high there, but it makes a higher swing low. Here we get just the move just slightly above that prior swing high, a higher low again is before we start to transition up. So entry point right there. Focus for next week. These things have become really important about how I kind of set up what I'm trying to work on, what I'm trying to improve on. And so the idea for this, so I'll start out with saying what it is. So 10 minutes, three times a day, just whenever you kind of have time, morning, afternoon, or evening, doing like a little motivational self-talk. And I'm spending about three minutes in each of them. So, you know, nine to 10 minutes total, but just sitting down and just spending three minutes just kind of hammering away on, you know, just telling yourself the positive things you want to work on with your health, what you have to, what you have to do and what you have to avoid to, you know, get to the health place you want to get to in terms of your work or training that you want to get to and in terms of family and relationships that you want to get to. So it's the idea for this started is because years ago I used to be a smoker and I'd quit by just basically spending an hour. I'd just sit down and I would just think of everything and I'd like say it out loud and I just think of everything that I hated about smoking, everything that I liked about not smoking and I'd do this just like for an hour, like just tell myself like I hate smoking, I am not a smoker, I think this is disgusting. Anyway, and after an hour of like just grinding this into you, I would not crave a cigarette. I would not smoke for, you know, a year. And then, but slowly that kind of like, whatever you ingrained in yourself with all that talk starts to dissipate. Maybe not after a year, after like maybe a few months. And then you need to do it again. And there's other things too, like maybe we have bad eating habits or something. And we motivate ourselves to, okay, I'm not going to eat chips. I'm going to get healthy, you know, all this stuff. But that, that little self-talk only lasts so long. It only lasts us maybe a few minutes or a few hours or a few days, depending on what it is and what's kind of working against us. And so I was kind of thinking about this idea and I do those kind of hour, half an hour meditations where I just like hammer something away or hammer at something and I feel really good about it for, you know, weeks or months. And I was thinking like, yeah, what if I could do this like on a daily basis, every day, just spend like a few minutes. I don't have to spend half an hour, but just like three minutes of a little reminder to, you know, I'm working on my health. I'm, I have my personal trainer. Why am I eating junk food? But if you don't remind yourself, you forget. So the, the objective was to kind of spend a few minutes morning, afternoon, and evening so that throughout the day you're reminded of what your goals are in each of these areas so that you're just kind of always aware of them, always working towards them. You're not going to, you're less likely to do things that will sabotage you because you just thought about it uh, and you're aware, aware of it and you're prepared for it. So yeah, this is the kind of focus for this week and ideally for, you know, hopefully I can turn it into a habit and just keep doing it to work on these areas and potentially others. So we'll call it uh, the end of the review. So that's how this week went and what I'm planning for next week. Uh, until next time, happy training.